Well, it is that time of year again, the time that everyone's making their top 10 coasters they've they've ridden up to that point. Now, for me, I'm going to be instituting a new rule because of things that have happened with certain coasters. If I haven't ridden it in the past two years, it's not on the list. End of story. There will be a second list for top five coasters that I have not ridden in the past two two years, because coasters can change in two years plenty, so I'm allowing for, for that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's get into today's video, and today I will be doing the top 10 wooden coasters. Probably tomorrow, if I have time, I'll do the top 10 steel, but anyway, today I'm doing my top 10 wooden coasters that I have ridden in the past two years. At number 10, we have American Eagle. Now, Yes, there are two sides, and I do count it as two credits, as I do with all dueling non-Mobius coasters. So, so this only counts as one side, but both sides are fairly similar, so you could place either on here. It's, it's a fun ride. Those hills provide airtime. It's pretty smooth, too, considering how old it is. So, it's a good ride. At number nine, we have White Lightning at Fun Spot in Orlando. Now, this ride I did find a bit disappointing, but it was still fun, and those hills, when your lap bar isn't all the way down, because they'll, they'll try to put it all the way down, you have to scooch forward to make it not happen, but if it's not all the way down, you will get a little bit of air time on them. It's, it's, it's a perfectly fun ride, nothing spectacular, but fun. If there was ever a coaster on here for a single moment, it's Jackrabbit at Kennywood. That double dip is actually quite fun, and I say it's a necessary experience for all coaster enthusiasts. There aren't too many elements like this out there, so it provides plenty of airtime, and you can make the seatbelt fairly loose, so you'll get airtime like what many people describe Phoenix as giving. I haven't ridden Phoenix, so obviously it's not on this list, but anyway. Next up, we have a coaster that's actually fairly obscure. We have Blue Streak at Conneaut Lake Park. Now, I know there are some people who actually haven't heard of this park, so I'm just going to say this is a park that has had financial trouble in the past, and it's in a fairly obscure location, but it's less than half an hour from Waldemere, so, so you can go there if you wanted to. It's fairly small though, but anyway, Blue Streak. This is a coaster that has had, that has been operating in and out over the years due to the financial struggles of the park, but now it's operating great and there's been plenty of retracking. This is operated the old-fashioned way with the hand brakes and everything. It's It's pretty cool, but Anyway, during the actual ride, it's fairly smooth, those hills provide some good air time, and it's just a fun ride. What else can I say? Up next, we have the new Mystic Timbers. Now, you know my stance on this ride. I'm not too fond of the shed, and I do think it is fairly overrated, but I still think it's a fun ride, and those airtime hills out in the wood are in the woods are pretty fun, so it's a good ride. I'm not going to say it's one of the best in the world necessarily, but for the top 10 wooden coasters that I've ridden in the last two years, it definitely deserves the number six spot. And now we're getting into the really good woodies. At number five, we have Thunderhead at Dollywood. It, this is a fairly famous GCI because it ranks high in the polls, I know, but it does provide plenty of good airtime and has some of the best banks of any coaster I've ridden. And when throwing around jokes about the shed, this is one of the coasters I say has a good shed with that fly-through station there. So, so yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good GCI and definitely recommend riding it. So everyone's list changes year to year. So this year. I have placed Ravine Flyer 2 ahead of Thunderhead. Now, on some days, it's Thunderhead ahead of Ravine Flyer 2, and on some days, it's Ravine Flyer 2 ahead of Thunderhead. But usually, I do 
rank ravine flyer too ahead of thunderhead so that's why i have ranked them this way but i don't mind if you have them ranked the other way but i do think the way ravine flyer 2 goes through the woods and has that bridge and all the airtime on it like yeah thunderhead does that all well but ravine flyer 2 i feel has a few more airtime moments and how many coasters have a bridge like ravine flyer 2 has and also, it has a good view from the top of the lift. Some of you may remember that Goliath was my number one wooden coaster last year. Well, this year I've ridden some great wooden coasters, and in fact, I rode two that I liked better than Goliath. So, this year it's only my number three wooden coaster. And the reason I liked the other two coasters that I ranked ahead of this better were they gave more consistent rides. Like, I... The awesome parts of Goliath, the drop, that airtime hill, the overbanks, are really awesome, but it is a little short, and mm, I do feel that since most people say the inversions are the highlight of the ride, and I feel that those are actually the low point, and the other stuff is really awesome, if those are supposed to be the highlight of the ride, then I should be taking a couple points off for that. So, so yeah, that's what I did. At number two, we have Prowler at Worlds of Fun. Now, you know how much I love this coaster. So, that airtime hill under the lift hill, like after you twist and go up, that gives an insane amount of airtime. And then the airtime going out is also really good, and the airtime coming back is just as good as going out, and then there's that great twist, twisty stuff at the end. So... Yeah, Prowler's a great ride. I feel it is severely underrated. Like, this is definitely my favorite GCI, and for good reason. You probably know, based off of the review I did of Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee, that it is my number one Woody, and yes, that is still the case. <laughs> now, what do I need to say about this coaster that I did not say in that review? It has a good inversion, an awesome drop, and awesome banks, and the airtime hills are very powerful throughout the ride. Like, this is one seriously awesome coaster, and I feel it will go down as fairly underrated since it's in Orlando. It is Florida's best coaster, I feel, but since it's in the land that Jeep, a lot of GP go for coasters, it's definitely going to go down as underrated since they're going to pick the larger steel coasters over this. But this is a must for coaster enthusiasts. Go out and ride Mind Blower. It's awesome. Thank you for watching. I intend to continue more with more countdowns within the next couple of days. I'm going to do a steel countdown and a not ridden in the last two years countdown so that I can be fair to those coasters that I haven't ridden in the last two years that just based on what I remember about them.